two, one, and we are live. I'm joined with uh, Jody Kennedy, fellow movement coach. Um, yeah, can you tell us a bit about yourself, Jody? It's great to be here, supping on fine whiskey <laughs> and raw milk. And we look after my guests. Yeah, only the, the finest. finest it? It's an honor. Um, <clears throat> where do I start? <laughs> At the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I suppose I started out as a young lad playing sports, as most do. Hurling GA, all of that type of messing, and um, progressed kind of into rugby in secondary school. But I always had a, I always had a, an obsession with martial arts, so that's kind of where. Actually, my mom, and I still say this to her, and she denies it to the ground. Wouldn't let me start uh, martial arts as a young lad because she thought she always said to me, "You'll you'll do the wrong thing with it," <laughs> which was a great vote of confidence from uh, from you your mother. Him, yeah, yeah, but. Um, Eventually, I started into martial arts, and that was like a big kind of driving force for me. So, I suppose fitness and movement and all of that stuff kind of evolves from wanting to be good at martial arts. You know what I mean? So, it's a traditional art, uh, Tai Chi Two. It's a it's a ninja two kind of thing. But um, I thought I was going to be in running around <laughs> with a black mask on and uh, making bombs. But uh, it turned out very different. But it gave me a lot of discipline as a young man. And, uh, it gave me a love for movement because movement is the key to being better at, at martial arts. So, um, and that's where I started to realize that actually just having a bit of conditioning and being a little bit stronger gave you a big advantage over people in in um, in sparring and in gradings and all that type of stuff. So, and um, we did a lot of full contact stuff as well. So it was in your interest to be in, in good shape. Um, that very yeah, well, I learned that it was a big advantage, and actually, it's one of the big things that you can control. Do you know what I mean? Um, like your skill level is obviously important but your conditioning as a base like if you lose your con- if you lose your gas it doesn't matter what skill set you have you can't put it into play if you're fatigued you know it's simple as that so uh, I just saw that as a basic requirement um, so eventually as I progressed through the ranks in that we started to um, you get a grade it's a blue belt grade but it's uh, kind of assistant instructor is the a title so we were put in charge of the fitness that's basically you take care take care of the warm-ups and all that type of stuff and it gives you a little bit of you know responsibility so it was then i kind of started looking into in the later later on i started looking into crossfit because i was just looking for different stuff to do with with people in the place other than the kind of there was a lot of half reps and you know very you know that type of yeah 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 100 push-ups and they're all like two inches deep so yeah I think I was typing into the internet like a psychotic circuits or something ridiculous like that and CrossFit popped up and that's I got like really into CrossFit then I used to put little challenges up in the dojo like we had a tire and we had a couple of different things it was like a hundred tire flips for time and you, you know a couple of like, yeah yeah and people would start doing it and like we actually the training that we did was already very kind of CrossFit-esque just without the kind of emphasis on form and depth and range of motion you know what I mean so that added another dimension to it because yeah, yeah. Like I think for quite a while a lot of martial artists they were kind of doing like CrossFit-esque like yeah. circuits and whatnot yeah you know, it, well it makes sense for a fighter doesn't yeah. it you know it's like it's, you the, never, it's not one particular thing you're yeah. really good at it. yeah and especially if you're in like a club with where there is full tank con- contact stuff going on and people are like into that intense kind of thing they're, they're going to go for that style of conditioning naturally anyway um, and then at that time I was also training I wanted to join the army so I was just leaving school at that time and the CrossFit gave me a super base for, for military stuff you know what I mean so um, it, it fared me up really well in there um, I flew through recruit training and all that no problem physically no problem do you know what I mean it was more of a mental challenge than anything um, I spent a long time in there too long I spent in the army really but um, always I was 13 years in there yeah too long for about 8 years too long because I really enjoyed the first 5 years or so you know it was really like it was a real good thing for that young man yeah like discipline, yeah it was brilliant you know it gave me like a real because I was um I wasn't great at like doing what I was told you know what I mean I was, I was a wild enough kid and like but at the same time I always had this obsession with joining the army like so maybe I knew what I needed you know or maybe I was searching for a rites of passage or something like that you know what I mean yeah I mean like, like we were talking about earlier the, like I do the, the dog brother stuff mm. um, 
yeah, if anyone wants to check them out, just look up dogbrothers.com. They're like a full contact six fighting group, but it's a big thing that we talk about of like that thing that, you know, in modern society, you don't really have as a young man those rites of passage anymore. Yeah, it's very true. That, like, there's no, yeah. even like within the Jewish religion where you have, you know, you come to age ceremony and a lot of other things, but you know, you or I as a regular Dublin lad, you know, you, yeah. you, it's not a thing. It's true. <laughs> there's no like, so true. you know, now you're a man. It's just like you yeah. finish college, so get a job. Or, there's no like distinct line you know where it's like okay now you're expected to be like a responsible adult and you've kind of left your childhood behind and yeah you might be shit at being an adult for the first while and you get treated like shit but you know what I mean that's yeah, that's yeah. the game like and that's part of it that's part of becoming a man and you're so right we, that's missing like from society you now it's something I'm actually really like passionate about yeah. um, so but, I, that's a become a real big thing for me as well it's yeah that, and that's also I mean you hear so much lady speaking of martial artists it's actually hilarious I have a, a few guys I train Jiu Jitsu with and like a few it's so funny how many martial artists talk about like gender and gender roles and gender equality and stuff like you wouldn't think it you know all these big tough bruisers and you're like mm. what they're talking about like you know trans rights and stuff <laughs> it's like yeah like a lot of people view masculinity now as this bad thing and to me it's it's not like it you know a guy who stands up for others and is a good guy and has those mm. structures in place to be like basically don't be a dick agreed you know Completely, it's such yeah. an important thing yeah and I think you're right men have been like <clears throat> like masculinity is like a, a bad word now you know what I mean mm-hmm. but like men are in a weird place right now they're getting into a weird <laughs> different side of things but like men I feel like men are in a really weird place now where they can't like to express your masculinity is um, seen as like a boorish or savage thing you know what I mean it's like nearly unacceptable in society because you're told that you are the problem in the world. You're the responsible for all the problems. But at the same time, by your male counterparts in like your general male counterparts in society, you kind of aren't able to be emotional or expressive either. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you're in this like weird men now are in this weird middle ground. So like, what what am I? And like women to a certain extent are, are, are maybe just as much are in that same situation where you know, they're expected to be a mother and they're expected to be like this yeah. nurturing yeah, a and woman, but also be like alpha, yeah. like CEO, like I work 80 hours a week, you know yeah, what I mean? And yeah, and, else, yeah. So. and nearly yeah. like women who like don't work now and decide to have children are, are nearly like kind of shamed, you know what I mean? In a way, like, so. That's traditional roles. Like. Yeah, like it's, it's, it, I think it is like, it is that thing, like, you know, traditional masculinity, people view it as like, oh, you know, it's being, like that thing about having no emotions and be the strong stoic figure yeah. but it's not really like this it's Clint like... Eastwood character that yeah. feels nothing <laughs> and that's a that's a bad thing because yeah. Yeah. you have to be it's like yin and yang you know what I mean like you to be a true man you have to be able to access both sides of the coin so you have to be able to access that feminine energy yeah. you have to be able to show emotion to support the people around you yeah. you know I've been in situations because I was terrible at, at expressing emotion and even recognising emotion and being in situations where people around me needed me, do you know what I mean? And I just didn't have the like emotional availability to give them what they needed. And that was because I I was obsessed with being like a man, you know what I mean? And and masculine. But now I realise that to truly be a man, like to and to be brave is actually to accept all of that and express your femininity as well, because that makes you more powerful than ever. Because you're not hiding from anything, you know? Yeah. I mean, and you can truly express yourself like we were saying it earlier boxing earlier on today and saying like any of those martial arts is, people think that those guys are going to be like big brutish bruisers and they're going to be out swinging people's heads and they're not so many of those guys it's like yeah you know yeah, very quickly exactly. that guy can kick your ass or not yeah. so you don't you yeah. know not to push people and they don't need to show you like yeah. who's boss because they're not they're not insecure about it you yeah. know like they're actually generally people in martial arts are super gentle and nice and they'll do anything for that's been my experience in most yeah. martial arts is that people in that game are like they're not they're not interested in you know off the mats being the biggest man in the room or anything because they, you know like they don't need to prove themselves I remember chatting to a, a woman about Jiu Jitsu before and she was very kind of surprised when I said like it's one of the few martial arts that I've ever done where people will constantly ask you like what's up have you been having a bad day like are, you know you've said about something and as mad as it sounds if you ever grapple with someone on a regular day to day basis I mean you're trying to kid each other every day but like you very quickly learn like oh like something's up with this guy yeah like, he's, a, he's a bit off he's not moving the way he normally would like so what's yeah. going on like 
Yeah. You wouldn't think these guys are doing that. would be like, oh, what's up, man? Okay, okay. <laughs> there's something on. <else."> yeah, <laughs> it's so true. And like, jiu-jitsu is a funny one because the people that do jiu-jitsu are like completely so far from what people expect. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like, these, nerdy like guys yeah, intellectual <laughs> guys and like, you know, people that are into like different types of stuff. They're actually quite, quite... Um, That's the thing in man's martial art, you know? It's, yeah. it's, it's like as loads of people say, it's kind of physical chess. Absolutely, yeah. And that's kind of what got me, you know, quite similar to yourself, got me mm-hmm. into, into movement and training people was, uh, yeah, through martial arts. Like I saw, you know, there was incredible, um, you know, martial artists that I've trained with and that I've had the pleasure of training, but the same guys, the actual like, physical strength and conditioning stuff was just terrible. Yeah. Like, they're, you know, there's still <clears throat> these same concepts that you heard of in, like, the 60s and 70s of, like, oh, if you lift weights, you get slow, and you can't be doing that rack. <laughs> you yeah. know, this bullshit. And it was like, <laughs> no, like, I mean, the science is there. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's, you know, we now know how to make the fastest athletes in the world. You know, yeah. Usain Bolt does Olympic weightlifting for a reason. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. And it's taking kind of that humble approach. I don't think a lot of people uh, like to do it in their own training. Yeah. People, is like... A- <clears throat> I like one pet peeve I was talking earlier to the boxing coach and uh, like a lot of people go to a boxing class or they go to like a pad work session and you know they're not there for the skill work they just want to wail on the pads because yeah. this is their cardio workout as well do you know what I mean yeah. this is like how they get fit when realistically if you're like boxing or doing any kind of skill work you should be focusing on the skills it's not about like you know what I mean yeah no I was actually I was actually so David, who was actually on the previous podcast, he was training a boxer, and I actually had a really long conversation with him about obviously training combat athletes. Hmm. Like to me, a big, big focus was cardio and researching cardio and what exactly cardio is, because it's Absolutely. such an umbrella term for so many things. Yeah. And when it comes to martial arts, and you've done a little bit of grappling, so you'll you'll understand this. One of the biggest things, actually, boxing, whatever it is, but. One of the biggest things, it's not how good your cardio is and it isn't how long you can run. It's how good your skill level is. Mm. If you're fighting a guy who's really good and you got to work your ass off to get anywhere, you're going to be really tired. Yeah. And he's probably not. <laughs> it's <okay. laughs> it's yeah. as simple as that. It's like efficiency, you know? Yeah, yeah. efficiency of movement. Yeah. yeah, and at the same time, like you're, like we were talking about earlier, your cardio is the base for that skill. So if, like, if you're skilled, but you don't have the gas or the conditioning to to back it up yeah. then you know it doesn't matter how skilled you are if you can't breathe yeah. because like I, you're not doing anything you know I was um, the wonderful talk I saw given by Matt Thornton uh, he's the head for anyone who doesn't know he's the head of SBG which is uh, John Kavanaugh who's Conor McGregor's coach he's his coach and he had a wonderful talk about self defence and it's forever stuck in my head and anyone who disagrees with this is either stupid or a liar <laughs> but he said that the number one thing in self-defense, the number one thing is physical fitness. And he's fucking spot on. Yeah. Because, I mean, you get into a fight, no matter what happens either, if you have to run away, or you have to stand your ground, if you're fitter than the other guy, you're already at a massive advantage. So true. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. if you get tired running up a flight of stairs, it's not going to be much use if you're running away from three lads. Like, yeah. It doesn't matter how many head kicks you can throw. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, when I started uh, jiu-jitsu, that was my whole game plan was like, I knew I was fit as fuck. I was doing the, the crossfit. I was strong. And so my game was just, I'm going to gas this person out. So I'll give mm-hmm. him two minutes. I'll go hell for letter, not get tapped. And after about two minutes, generally, you'd see them gassing out. And then I'd, I'd eventually, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know. So that was my whole game plan to start. <laughs> yeah, that's what the Greece used to call cooking someone. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, brilliant yeah. term. Yeah, for me, because I, I, I like, I've said to people before, I, I got into jiu-jitsu from watching the Gracies. Miserable in college, doing a course he didn't like, and watch Yeo Nike something just <laughs> badass, savage. And uh, they had that term, like you know, because you see in like the early UFCs, like UFC one and two and stuff, so, like ninety minute matches, just sitting on top of a guy <laughs> waiting for him to get yeah, tired, yeah. doing that exact thing. Like, yeah, well, I didn't even have the skill to do that. I was yeah. more of a just like. But it's funny that like that's <laughs> that is actually a perfect example of it that you, yeah. as someone who didn't have you know a hoist crazy level of skill. Mm like a black belt level of skill, you could just hold someone down because you had the physical fitness. Yeah. Whereas he didn't necessarily have that, yeah. but he had years of jiu-jitsu so he could hold down anyone. Yeah, it's true. It shows you how important yeah. it is. I he guess. just couldn't hold me down because it was just bucking yeah. like a lunatic. <laughs> Buck wild. <laughs> yeah. 
And actually, I remember bringing people in from the CrossFit gym and doing jujitsu with them, and they were complete like newbies, no yeah. no jujitsu experience, and so hard to so awkward. Like, just people who are strong and fit, like yeah. you know, because someone who's not fit, like if you you can just give them your weight and kind of wear them out. You know what I mean? Even if they are like strong, but they'll just get. But these people are just like. Yeah, I've had it with like big would be guys <laughs> or mad. weightlifters, like yeah. just pin you down. Yeah. And like, you might just hold you in a position. Yeah. But you're just like, well, we're here now for however long yeah, it exactly. takes. Like. It's actually quite frustrating when you you have been doing like a martial art and then you run into somebody like that. It's yeah. like, it's a wake up call for you, you know? Because you get into these little things in the gym where like, you know, I do this and you do that and you're like, yeah. The, it kind yeah. of creates a little false environment nearly because you're used to people reacting in a certain way but or they're not reacting someone how somebody you know. on the street will react that doesn't know what the hell you're doing you know yeah. so when they're they're acting they're doing things that you're like oh you're not supposed to do that but who says like yeah. you know like, yeah I mean that's a, that's a big one like especially in like kickboxing or boxing or something you're always like the guy who doesn't know anything but comes in and throws these mad winging yeah. punches <laughs> yeah they're the one who has more of a likelihood of not yet than the guy who Big has time. 20 years experience because yeah. <laughs> like you're used to defending against straight punches hooks you know and then this guy's throwing like big windmill shovel hooks from all <laughs> over the place and yeah. yeah yeah it's so true and that's actually good for you you know to, to get exposed to that like yeah yeah I mean it's like any kind of movement practice I think being exposed as many different people and styles and variables is just always yeah. fantastic to do it it's so true yeah and that's kind of where like leading on from where from after like the crossfit stuff and that's going to cross again your window into other movement styles you know a little bit of gymnastics and a bit of you know different types of movements and um it kind of got to a point where it was like like how how strong do i need to be you know yeah. Because CrossFit's What's great. It's very enough. progressive, like. Mm. So when you first start, it's like you've got this route set out and it's boom, 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 numbers on the bar, yeah. you know, reps on whatever, you know, getting your single leg squats, all that type of stuff, and it's great. But first 18 months, two years, you're flying. And then you hit a solid plateau, you know, and you all of a sudden have to look at your weaknesses. And you, yes. yeah, it goes from, like, having all these awesome things you're working on to, like, a couple of little things that you're shit at, <laughs> you know? And that's like, that's a harsh thing because people get so, you know, so positive at the start and then you just hit this screech and halt. And that's where you kind of have to start thinking for yourself yeah. and start branching out, you know, because you can't just keep hammering deadlifts, hammering squats and hammering cleans just always, because everybody has their ceiling, you know? Yeah. And like, you could be spending that time working on other things. Like, so that's what I was saying to you earlier. I, I was deadlift in 195 and i wanted to get a 200 deadlift just pure ego like and it took me a year to do it yeah like I, and how much damage did i do to my body or like what's the point of diminishing returns with that stuff how strong do you actually need to be you know 100 percent. so then to fan out and start looking at other things but like it's so much harder to grade or to to know how far you're getting with something like a front lever or a back lever or your flexibility because it's like so slow do you know what I mean? or a yeah and like if you're used to just constantly being like so progressive all the time every time you hit the gym it's like pr yes mm -hmm. and that stuff is less sexy to you then because it's less measurable you know and it's more difficult and yeah, I mean, it requires I was, more i was explaining that to a friend of mine recently he was asking you know how heavy should i go with my deadlift mm. and i was like well once you start to reach a certain point you're just gonna have to train nothing else yeah and exactly. I, I, it was like because you, you need to just go so specifically and specialize in that movement and get really good at it and a lot of people don't really like to talk about it with their training yeah. <laughs> like like actually I put, I put up a, a blog post today about it um, about you know embracing the suck like that shoshin mm -hmm. mindset that you know I'm sure you're aware of to mm -hmm. the, the Japanese martial arts so like you're going to be a beginner at stuff and even if you're not even if you're advanced at something you need to understand that like look at it as a beginner and go well, what do I suck at with this like what needs to be improved exactly. even if it's just a deadlift is it like oh I can't get it off the floor when it's too heavy or I can't lock it out or what is it and a lot of people I don't think enjoy doing that with their own training like, people don't want to take ownership you know it's the consumer thing it's it's like yeah. like you're my trainer I pay you you make me fit or you're my therapist I pay you you fix my pain mm -hmm. and you know this is the a lot of the problem with the world now, I think, is that people aren't taking ownership of their own shit. Like, look, the, the food industry is so messed up now. Like, yeah. if you're not taking ownership of your own nutrition and how you move, you're way behind the curve, like, because 
you're living you're living on somebody else's rule you know like it, it, there's too much trickery out there now to just blindly trust anything yeah, when it comes to help like I understand as well for a lot of people it's not an easy thing to do but <laughs> we actually said this earlier when we were eating food that so much is just common sense yeah and I know that's like oh fuck those guys what do they know but it's honestly it is like Right, even take like a, a basic standard healthy meal, like your handful of carbs, your meat and your, your greens. That's what your mom was giving you when you were a kid. Like if you're an Irish person, that was a traditional Sunday meal. It was a bit of meat, one or two spuds and some green veg. And that was you. And now everyone's like, oh, do I have to eat like, you know, zero carb or do I have to eat quinoa or do I have to eat fucking gluten-free, whatever. Yeah. And it's like, no, you need to eat like vegetables and meat and stuff that hasn't been messed with. Like, yeah. And I hate to give nutrition advice to people because it's such a deep field. And I feel that if anyone wants like solid advice, they need to first investigate what their own body responds to and what yeah. they do. So true. Because no two people are the same. And it's the same yeah. with physical training. Like. Mm-hmm. Agreed completely. I think people are like just in such a point, uh, like especially the fitness industry and the nutrition industry. It's like, I feel like it's deliberately sown like confusion. Yeah. Just to keep so like it's not that people are ignorant and it's not that they don't want to do the right thing for themselves or for their kids. Obviously people want their kids to be as healthy as they can. You want your partner to be as healthy as you can. But you're being sold a crock of bullshit. And actually you're being sold like fifty crocks of bullshit. Yeah. And that just mass like it's so hard to figure out what's the right thing. And that's why these fads catch on, you know, like whatever your low carb your high carb your thicken yeah, Atkins, Atkins, whatever, what, right. whatever it is like people are looking actually for an answer but the problem is that there's so many answers out there and most of them are like dead ends you know Our diet food is a perfect example yeah but i think exactly. like, you, like you were saying earlier with like the, the comparison of your mobility of your front levers or any of that stuff that it's like food and nutrition it's a very incremental thing mm-hmm. um and I mean, like I use the analogy of like a tree or a child, you know, being born that it takes months and months for something to grow yeah, and for something to change. Like if you plant a seed, you don't expect next month for there to be an oak tree spread out of, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> people expect this with their diet. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, how long did it take you to get fat? Like how long did it take you to put on those five kilos of uh, fat around your waist? Mm-hmm. Like, was it overnight no it took months and months of you eating badly and then you know years you, most yeah. likely you know so it's going to take as long yeah to get rid of that and it's yeah. also going to take lifestyle choices and changes to affect that like yeah and like you have to really care that's the thing and like we forget like i'm not saying i'm amazingly educated but like we forget just how much you know do you know what i mean in that like what when we say oh it's just common sense I always have to remind myself that, like, for yeah, most people, that yeah, it's, sure. like, it's not common sense, like, they're trying, but they're just so in the dark, you know? And, like, you think about the journey that you've come on, like, or I've come on, yeah. as you learn about these things, you learn, and then you learn more, and you, like, it's true. you slowly learn incrementally, just like you grow, I, you know? I, I don't mean that in a flipping way, like, I do, I do understand that it's, like, you know, obviously I've spent a decade or so looking into this stuff and researching it. But I think the thing that I'm getting at is that, like, we're constantly looking at all these mad different sources and different things that say, like, oh, you know, you got to do this, you got to eat this, you got to eat this diet food, and you got to do this exercise. And a lot of the time we understand that, like, like no, there is just certain things that you should do. Mm-hmm. And you do know, I think most people would accept the fact that you do know that you realize you, you need to eat veg, you need to eat your fruit, you need to eat your meat. And eating sugary stuff is generally accepted to be pretty bad for you. And that's kind of what I get at now. I know that like the specifics of, oh, you know, how much or whatever things you should eat or what things you should avoid or specifics of things can get very complicated. Yeah. That's why I refuse to give out diet information. Yeah, it is. it's a tricky area. But I think in general to eat even reasonably healthy isn't insanely hard. You just got to kind of accept it. Like, all right, these things I should probably avoid. Yeah. These things I probably should eat. Yeah, I agree. I think there's a pro- the problem there is that people are in like, it's a herd mentality so if everybody around me is drinking a litre of coke a day and they're eating a chocolate bar then i feel like i should be able to do that because that's everyone's doing it do you know what i mean like like everyone's at it so 
Uh, and I think we're, we're sold this like quick fix for heaven like quick yeah. fix for food quick fix mm-hmm. for fitness like I saw it in work the other day uh, there was a, a lady eating um, you know, on her table on her desk in work she had like rice cakes and almonds and then beside that pack of biscuits and a pack of jellies and I'm just like yeah well that's, like that, that's... that in itself is the, the contradiction <laughs> that is a beautiful face. picture like yeah, actually that's like, someone needs to draw that up and yeah, frame it and like, you know, she, you know, <laughs> like she's obviously making an effort to eat well and she yeah. knows she's eating well and she's trying to mm-hmm. but then she has this shit beside it that yeah. it's like I guarantee she probably knows she shouldn't eat that shit too like. and then that's like the, the reward thing so people they do it with exercise too you know oh I'm gonna train extra hard and like I hear people saying this actually all the time oh, yeah. like I'm working in a corporate environment and, some, and like oh weekend's coming an extra hard session today so I can have a few more drinks tonight and it's like I know it's it's like they're saying it in a kind of joking way but it's it's probably how they think you know and the same thing with, with diet it's like I've eaten good for, and that's the problem with cheat days and like that type of mentality is that oh I'll eat well for this amount of time and then I can go nuts and you know what I mean yeah yeah um, and it's also like I understand that you you're not saying it's like you have to be like a monk in the hills and only eat lentils and mm. rice and stuff. It's like, you, yeah, you're going to eat your, your bit of whatever your treat is, your preferred thing. But just not to be doing that every single fucking day. Or yeah. not to be like, I'll have a cheat day on Friday and I'll wait for some points. And then I'll get up Saturday and have a breakfast roll <laughs> and uh, me, me bit of a bit of a, you know, bit of a lunch out and then I'll go get some dinner and a bit of cake maybe. And then oh, well, should Sunday, we have a roast and we'll, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A lot of people get into that habit, and I've yeah, done it do. myself. Like, so yeah, it's not yeah, me all done it, you know? shitting on people. You mm-hmm. know, it's absolutely. But the, like, it. Tony Riddle has. Um, I don't know if you know Tony. Did. I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like man's work. Yeah, Fantastic yeah. Stuff. I love Tony's concept of like biologically normal and social socially normal. Yeah, yeah. So and biologically extreme and socially extreme. So like I nowadays, if you want to be healthy, which is biologically normal yeah, yeah. then you have to be socially extreme to a certain extent and those two things play off each other yeah. you know so like i'm doing keto diet at the moment for personal reasons you know what i mean like not for weight loss or anything but for fair i'm trying it out i want to be a guinea pig and yeah, yeah. um, i do that myself like, yeah you know like, like, all like, the time, like yeah i love them i've done that with lots of different diets and um like that's socially extreme you know mm-hmm. but it's in my opinion, biologically normal to be in a fasted state and to be producing ketones and like you're you're seen as an outlier. Yeah, it's for funny, these like things, I, you know. I, I, I know a lot of people like hate the whole intermittent fasting thing, and I do the odd time do it. Um, and I used to do it fairly regularly, but the biggest benefit I saw from it was that I knew how to fast. Yeah, and I know people are like, "Well, why is that so good?" Well, I got really ill when I was away in the summer. Um, it's just a weird thing I get every now and then but like people were like oh but you haven't eaten in like two days and mm. you're going to come train for the day and I'm like yeah they're like what yeah like, yeah it was no problem yeah. like, you know I can go time without eating I'll eat after absolutely and it's like we don't have to eat three meals at you know nine o'clock and one o'clock and five o'clock every yeah. single day like we don't have to do that yeah and actually it may not be that good for you um, you know and I find, like, I've found now that the actually being emotionally disconnected from food, it's it's such a powerful thing. Like, I, when I've been doing this keto stuff, one of the side effects is that you stop getting hungry. Yeah. And it's really weird. Like, the other night, it was nine o'clock in the evening. I hadn't eaten anything all day. And I just remembered, like, that all yes, of a sudden, I eat. literally <laughs> haven't eaten anything all day. I trained... Yeah. I felt perfect. I didn't feel hungry at all. So, and like I had to actually force myself to eat, you know, yeah. I did eat a kilo of chicken wings then afterwards, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I felt completely fine about it, you know, but yeah, like, that's, that's, that's a nice thing to just not feel like, oh, when's my next meal? What, like, where's that coming from? And just be disconnected from it. It's really nice, you know, because I think that's, people are obsessed with like eating. That's why I'm not huge into like supplements and I just find all that stuff, it gets a bit neurotic, you know? Yeah. Um, like, I mean, I will take the odds supplement, but you really don't need it. Yeah, I don't think so and either. No, I understand at the beginning for some people, some things might be a bit preferred or might be handy because you're still trying to figure out, oh, I should eat X or eat more or whatever. But I think for a lot of people, it's also uh, a bit nicer to just eat the things that you should eat. Like, of course it is, yeah. It's like, you know? uh, it's like instant gratification and sacrificing like long-term health because that's, like, that's classic human. Yeah. Like, let's... Uh, 
rip all the, the trees out of the rainforest you know what I mean because we can do shit with them now and make money who cares what happens 20 years down the road I think, <clears> I think people really forget what supplements like, if you listen to the man himself Arnold Schwarzenegger talking about this and he said people kind of forget their supplements yeah. it's in the name it's like I'm not saying that you should just take protein powder every day <laughs> I'm saying yeah if you're working out really hard maybe you want to take a little bit yeah, yeah. But it's not like, oh, I'm going to replace my meals with this now. And yeah. I think that's that also does happen with some people. Yeah. And that was like the, what was it, the Weight Watchers thing back in the day, eating the, drinking the shakes instead of a meal. Yeah. It's like all those were were protein shakes with a bit of sugar in them. Yeah. And like, it's funny, Weight Watchers have completely flipped now. Yeah. And like all, like fruit, veg, it's all based. It's basically like a paleo diet now. Yeah. Where, and you don't count any vegetables or fruits. All you count is carbohydrates and fats. You know what I mean? So they've kind of done a complete head spin like on it, which it actually seems healthy. I haven't looked into it deeply, but seems like it's actually like healthy enough now as opposed to slugging shakes like an animal. It's great that they're, <laughs> that they're reviewing. Like, I mean, I always say that people, any system that's not reviewing itself. Yeah. And true kudos to them like, for that. Yeah. Big yeah, time. Yeah. Um, I mean, I always, like I'm always somewhat I guess a bit skeptical. Well, I'm skeptical of everything. That's kind of my job. But like, I'm always skeptical <laughs> of any skeptic. Natural skeptic. I think as a coach, you kind of have to be. Uh-huh. I think Ido Portal said that you have to have a, an excellent bullshit filter. I agree completely. And any diet things that I look at, regardless of if it's a supplement, if it's an organization, I'm always like, if it's kind of making people hang around, then I'm kind of like, mm, what's going on here? Now I understand a lot of those things. There's also people stay for the support and stuff, and I'm totally for that too. Like, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, you create a little community and you're all looking for the That's same goals. But, but it's sometimes kind of, I'm like, well, why don't they have the information? Why do they keep paying to come back? And it's like, uh, like really, the ultimate goal of one of those things should be to free you from it, you know? <laughs> like Yeah, like I've said that to people as a trainer. Like that's your number one goal as a trainer is to not see the person you're training again. <laughs> and that sounds so messed yeah. up, but it genuinely is. Like I shouldn't, right, but let's say someone comes to me, and this is a common one for me. So let's say someone comes to me and wants to learn a handstand. And I go, yeah, cool. We'll learn a handstand. Let's say we spend a year, a person gets nails a handstand, everything's great. And I was like, great. You go practice <laughs> your handstands wherever you want then. Yeah. Like, we're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, why are you sticking with me? No, it's not that I, like, if I like the person or maybe they want to work on some more advanced skills then, then yeah, it's no problem. But, like, it should be an end goal of a coach to give that person Absolutely. the toolbox that they need to go do whatever they need to do. To educate them, I agree completely. Yeah. Like, that's what I see a coach as a facilitator. You know, as some like a, somebody that supplies you with the knowledge to help yourself rather than like, I'm not in the game of like, you know, just counting reps for people and giving them what they want. You know what I mean? That's not, I'm not passionate about that. You know, I, I like, I like to see somebody develop. Like I've actually told people and, before that you know, people are like, oh, you know, you're going to scream me and shout at me and tell yeah, me what to yeah. do. And I'm like, no, if yeah. you want me to do that, I'm not going to work it. <laughs> I'm the, I like, even in classes, <laughs> I don't do that. Like, I don't do that shit in yeah. classes. Like, I'm not a cheerleader. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but, um, if you want some people like that bench. style of training, you know, yeah. that's, that's what they need is basically accountability, like a kick in the arse. And that's why they go there. You know, so that's what the big problem with that is when that's done, your accountability is done. Yeah. It's like, well, that class is over or, you know, that person moved on or, Absolutely. You know, don't have yeah. to bother with this anymore. Yeah. And like, uh, I think a big part of a lot of this, like whether it's training or nutrition or managing your weight or whatever, whatever it is, is discipline, you know, is like self-discipline. I think we're in a world now where self-discipline is not celebrated. It's it's like, yeah. and it's just, we're taught. consumers. It's like, and consumerism is like... It's king. Yeah, yeah. but that is like slovenly you know what i mean yeah. by by definition by like it's things, just like consume watch the shit like drink the beer yeah. fucking sit down and just absorb everything you know watch your netflixes and eat yeah all the food and-, and rather than like having to actually impose a little bit of discipline i think martial arts give you that you know to a certain extent yeah i mean that's been a fantastic one for me yeah. growing up like i think for any young man i really encourage young men to do this because regardless of what anyone likes to say, innately you're going to have levels of aggression as a young man. It's just what our hormones make you do. Absolutely. And really. having a, a safe and healthy outlet for them is really something that we need. And like, also having the discipline to realise, like, right, if I do act like a dickhead, that guy's going to slam me on the head or yeah. <laughs> kick me in the face. Or, so true. You know, it's, um, it's, it's an important thing to understand and to celebrate that discipline. And I, I think what you are saying earlier, like it is... Like, sorry, what, what Tony was saying, that socially versus, you know, 
naturally acceptable things yeah. that like socially I mean I put myself in uh, like awkward situations growing up and I mean I missed a lot of parties and events and outings and stuff to go and do jiu-jitsu and go and train for mm. MMA and to get up early and do my runs and you know do all the boring shit and miss out in parties because I was training or yeah. I mean like I remember I think my past three work parties I missed because I was either fighting the next day or I had like a competition or something. Yeah, I know. And it's like I'm the same. You know, you need to understand that, like, oh, this one's not a bad thing, and if it means you're missing out on things, then are those things? But are you missing out on things? Yeah, exactly. You know? Are they that important to you? Like, is getting some free drink and work yeah. that important? Yeah. Um, like, uh, so I'm the same. Like, so many of my friends, like, just went on a, you know, a crazy bit. Like between the age of whatever. It's, between 18 and kind of 26 or whatever it was like and I kind of stopped all that shit early on because I was into me training and I was training like six days a week and you know I was going out on my own doing my own training and like that was my focus you know what I mean and that took me out of that whole environment which I'm very thankful for because you know I've seen people go go bad ways with that stuff like because if you don't have a focus like and it could be ga or it could be rugby it doesn't oh, have to be martial arts people, you know I yeah mean, you find whatever discipline like it could be dancing it could be yeah jumping on a trampoline in your backyard yeah. whatever the hell and you is, find like, generally people who had some kind of focus like that they you know it kept them on a straight it put them on a different path let's say than if you're just like because partying's great like but like after so many parties they're all very similar you know and yeah. like i realized that it's not it's not the parties it's actually the people, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, now I, I like spending time with, with people, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you often sit now, this is why we do this. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> sit and have a conversation yeah. with somebody, you know? Is, I think it's such a rare thing in today's yeah, world. It's so true. It is. You don't sit down and have a two or three hour conversation of just talking about stuff. No. <laughs> I mean, to the point where you people are listening to this. <laughs> you know, that like crazy people. Crazy people just going to talk <laughs> shit. Yeah, but like, you know, People don't put themselves in a situation actually sit down and talk and discuss things. and Yep. Like, I noticed it at a really young age. And I kind of quickly dipped out of the whole partying thing because I saw that, like, you know, it was the same friends going to the same club, having the same nights out, having the same parties, the same people, spending all the money that they were earning, working, you know, part-time jobs or whatever, every single week. Mm-hmm. I was just like, done this once or twice it's grand but do I want to do this every Friday and Saturday yeah. do I want to do the same thing mm-hmm. I was like yeah I could go and learn this stuff and be the ultimate badass ninja that I wanted to be <laughs> <laughs> you know it's discipline is not something that you know should be all consuming either yeah you gotta go out and you gotta have fun and do all the fun stuff but it could be the thing that will hold you back from you know, doing silly shit and kind of missing out on those opportunities that you otherwise were kicking yourself for not taking in, in yeah. an older life. Yeah. I see so many people who are like, oh, you know, I'm too old to do this. I'm too old to learn that thing. Oh, I wish I'd done that thing when I was younger. And That's, you're already dead. You Give know, it up. Like, it's like, you know like I mean? you're stop. You can still go do stuff. Like. Yeah, absolutely. And like, actually, going back to what we were talking about earlier, like, with training and, well, like, the big thing is where where do you want to go? Like, what are you doing? Why are you doing it? Um, what's the ultimate goal of what you're doing? Do you know what I mean? Like, why are you training? Yeah. Like, I that's, I ask people that all the time to the point where a lot of people get really frustrated at me for doing it. <laughs> it's an important question though. Yeah. Like, I, like someone asked me flexibility advice the other day. They were saying like, oh, my, uh, my butterfly stretch, like, um, how can, like, I'm really tighten it. What can I do to, you know, do it properly or do it better or whatever. I said, well, why are you doing it? And it's not me being a dickhead. It's mm-hmm. like, do you need that? Like, are you having pain in that area? If you're having pain, is maybe it's something else. Like, maybe it needs to get addressed. Maybe you even need to see a doctor. Now, not, obviously, I didn't say it to the person. It's a bit extreme, but, like, I'd say, well, well why? Like, I, I, do you want to get your splits or something? Do you want to just get more flexible? Do you want to, like, get down to a squat? Like, whatever, what is your reason for doing it? Because it's going to take a very different path, and I'm going to tell you very different things depending on what that goal mm-hmm. is. And how much you want that goal. Yeah, like, yeah. How, how much are you going to put into this? You know? I mean, uh, there's a friend of mine. Um, he's also a, a dog brother guy. Um, amazing. Um, coach himself, teaches. He's a SFG guy. The strong nice. first Jira, kettlebell guy, barbell, everything else that's awesome. <laughs> and, uh, he always has a saying that he says to everyone, he just says, uh, it depends. 
it's probably the most common answer he gives <laughs> as a coach when they ask like him like it. oh you know what can I do for X he goes oh it depends yeah <laughs> it's, honestly it does yeah. like it's like a very martial artsy type of yeah. thing you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean it's yeah. kind of there is no right answer there's no wrong answer yeah, it depends what on the situation if this guy punches like, me he's like depends yeah it does depend <laughs> it's Mike Tyson yeah. it's going to be a different reaction to Joe Blog off the street like. <laughs> and like I was pondering that question like the why like what what is the poor like why am I training I always enjoy doing like lots of different stuff and I think ultimately like I think it might be an ADO that said this but it clicked with me it was like people are obsessed with learning like a trick or learning like like my 200 kilo deadlift like yeah. I just wanted that like my ego wanted that 200 kilos you know what I mean and like really the benefit doesn't lie in the trick or the final product the benefit is in the learning of the thing so once you actually are able to do the thing it's no longer beneficial to you you know it's actually teaching yourself to be good at learning stuff that's the way i look at it that's 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 the beginner mind yeah you know it's like i want to be good at learning stuff like because that way you can pick anything up you know what i mean um and that that leaves everything open and I'm a greedy boss. I don't want to, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to box myself in anything. I want to have all the fun, like, you yeah. know, so that's why I'm doing weird shit. Like I'm doing aerial rope and I'm doing the hoop and all these things that are supposedly female, but are actually super fucking tough. <laughs> I challenge anyone who oh, thinks yeah. they're strong to get up on that rope and give it a shot. I mean, someone was um, laughing the other week. I said like, oh, I was looking around for uh, bar classes, you know, like ballet bar yeah, classes in yeah. Dublin. And he was like, ha ha, why would you do that? Because, have you ever tried yeah, like, exactly. any form of it? Yeah. It is so tough. Yeah, it is so hard, man. Um, I see, like, you see people, like, I was the same. I went into aerial thinking, oh, you know, like, I'm pretty strong. Like, I'm not just a weightlifting guy, but yeah. I've done martial arts. I've done lots of other types of movement. I'll probably be pretty decent at this. And, like, these girls are oh, seriously. seriously strong. Like, like if anyone's ever actually... done stuff on, like, a gymnastic ring. Exactly. And, like, imagine that, but you're having to like really grab them. <laughs> yeah. And the, the rope thing. is very it's strange really because like everything is offset on it. Yeah. So there's no level grips. It's always one hand over the other or, you know, a compromised grip of some mm-hmm. kind. Um, so it changes the whole thing up completely. Like it's not a level surface. Like it, it's uh, it's very odd and it takes a lot of time to build up the strength. Like, you know, yeah, to, if to anyone's do ever even tried rope climb, like, exactly you know, you're, yeah. you're doing that you start swinging it the thing yeah. you do upside down and exactly really crazy stuff I, like i saw the benefit in that stuff straight away like yeah. um, and I, like i tell you grip strength is a funny thing like you can hang on a goddamn barbell or hang on a goddamn pull-up bar like all day with an overhand grip and when you take it to the rope and it's like a vertical yeah. grip it's so much different like it's literally your grip is taxed so much more, you know. It's, it's kind of very like yeah, rock climbing pinch grips, that yeah. type of thing, where you just burn out like pregnant forearms, you know, just dying. Learning there's so many different grips as well. Like. Yeah, yeah. And um, another, like one thing that I've kind of realized as well is that I was kind of just training way too much. In mm-hmm. you know, it was like I thought volume was a measure of what was going to come and like as you get older I think you realise that volume is doesn't play that much of a, a factor you know once you build up like probably at the start when you're building up a base of strength and all that like volume is very important but like I only do one day of strength training a week now like that's it and I had this theory that you could kind of maintain your strength with one day squat squat press pull um, and it's it's working like it's I'm strong enough like I'm still squatting 150 you like know you said like you need to be doing how strong you need to be exactly like, like any more yeah, yeah. So. yeah and like i think that's another good reason that spreading your base wide and doing lots of different things is good because you don't get an unrealistic view of yourself so if you just power lift all the time like all power to you but you're just going to be a great power lifter fun, you're not going to be you know oh yeah <laughs> fun, unintentional <laughs> But like get up on a rope or something or, you know, it's not going to be so sexy for you. Like, like I, I, was, um, I was, I think maybe it was David I was saying that too, where he, like I was chatting to a guy in work who was saying, you know, he's a powerlifter, could squat 200 kilos, like yeah. a big ogre of a man, saying could do a pull up. Well, there you go. Yeah. And I was like, well, you yeah. know, you and I fall down a hole, can yeah. you squat your way out of it? Like, <laughs> don't mean to be, you know, yeah. towards a man, but it's the truth. Yeah. Like if. I agree completely. And as well, it was actually, my girlfriend mentioned this to me. <laughs> getting depressed talking about insurance but um, we're saying that you know 
I view training in a lot of ways, and I think what you're saying about maintaining strength is quite interesting in that. I view the hard work that you do as insurance for later down the line. I think what you're saying about maintaining strength is a perfect example of it, that you put in a lot of hard work, you invest in it, and then you have it. Like you, yeah, you got to maintain it, look after it, whatever. Yeah. yeah, but you've invested the time and you've built that you know insurance for your body, and it also exactly. strengthens it and you know, prevents it from getting messed up from injuries and whatnot too. Like. Exactly, it keeps keeps you going. You know, it's like a, it's like insurance policy for for later on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then how like what's the minimum effect of those? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because that's like, like. That's what everyone asks, really. Like. Yeah, but at the same time, like people get obsessive about things. You know, people are going on mad small of fucking squat programs and they haven't even like built up a base of strength yet, you know? And it's like, why are you so obsessed with this? Why don't you build up your strength slowly? And, you know, once you have it there, then you can like... It was actually hilarious. Do a minimum effect of those, you know? I was training uh, the that professional kickboxer we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. um, wonderful guy, amazing athlete. But when I was training him... And I'd actually encourage anyone who does like a high intensity sport to look into HRV training and HRV monitors. Oh yeah, I love HRV. Yeah, it's, it's just proper, a fantastic science. But basically, if anyone doesn't know what it is, your HR just refers to not the department in your work, but it refers to your, your heart rate. So it's you know each beat goes ba bump ba bump ba bump ba bump. HRV monitors the beats in between that because not every beat goes ba bump ba bump. Sometimes it'll go ba bump, little gap ba bump ba bump. And it was developed by. I think the Russians as like a, a way to monitor people's stress levels and heart and see how they were responding to like re entering earth and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and basically that's what all it does. It monitors how stressed out your heart is and how basically worn out you are. It tells you if you're in like a sympathetic nervous yeah. state or a parasympathetic state, let's rest or digest or fight or flight. And as a coach, it is the most wonderful tool because you can bring someone in and within three minutes you just say, Stop that on, sit down. And you know, right, you're overtrained. You're not yeah. doing any work today. <laughs> and this guy was so frustrated. Some days he'd come in and I'd see it and I'd go, you didn't rush yesterday like I asked you to. And he'd go, no, I did, I did coach, I did. And I'd be like, doesn't say that here. <laughs> and he'd be like, no, no, I did, I did. Or you didn't rest long yeah. enough. And, and, like, and then I'd be like, and I eventually got to the point and said, you know, knew him, I trained him over a few months coming up to a fight and I was like, all right, I guarantee you can do two rounds of what we're about to do. And he'd be like, all right. I, no, I'd be gone. I'd be gone for the whole lot. We do exactly two rounds. No like, way. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> I love it. And it, yeah. but the point I'm getting at is that like so many people, even professionals, they want to just keep plugging in at the training and keep overtraining. Mm -hmm. And overtraining, a lot of people go like, "Oh, it's not a thing or whatever." It's not if you're smart about your training. But I've seen firsthand a lot of people get to the point where they're almost too fit. And they learn to ignore the signs and they learn to ignore the body breaking down. I've been there. I've done going. it. I know yeah. exactly. I've been that guy, like, you know, 100%. And, like, the HRV tool was so handy because I could actually point at a number and go, here's where you should be. Here's where you currently are. Yeah. Like, you you can't the argue with the, the yeah. green light or the red light, you know? And, I mean, he himself and even his, his father said I, after that camp, the fight he had, he fucking demolished the guy. And Love even his dad was like, that's the best I've ever seen you. Great. And now, yeah, he's still training like a madman. He's got amazing skills and stuff too. But for so many guys, it's just unlocking those yeah. little things. And I mean, yeah. like it, there is having a, a sensible coach who knows what they're doing. And I actually heard someone, uh, I forget who it was. And then the coach brought up the point of like, um, it was a few years ago, a lot of different UFC fighters were getting all different strength coaches and doing all kind of really mad stuff. And he pointed out that you could get X fighter. It doesn't matter who it is. And I say they've never done any other training. And you just go, uh, all right, you're just going to jump up and down on the spot for an hour every day. And he was like, that itself will make a change. Now, it might not make him an amazing fighter, ever, but yeah, physically yeah. it's going to make him fitter in some sort of way. Yeah, definitely. And it's like, you can kind of, with those guys, get them to do anything. And it will have a benefit, but is it the benefit that they need? Yeah. And again, like we said earlier, what's the purpose of it? Exactly. I think that's quite an interesting thing within you know movement as a discipline and I suppose it's interesting for you coming from from CrossFit and I know you almost see me flinching here saying the word movement because <laughs> I think movement as a, a word and as a an entity has kind of been co-opted by a lot of people in the way CrossFit has yeah that it has all these connotations to it and the core message and the core ideas behind it are brilliant mm -hmm. absolutely fantastic but it has gotten a bit wishy-washy in what it's about yeah I kind of cringe when I hear the like yeah. movement coach you know what I mean it's like, like I hate to say it to people but it's like I'm not 
like your traditional fitness coach either mm-hmm. like it's it's like the way I see it now like is like anyone who's into like expanding their knowledge about movement in any regard is a movement person do you know what I mean yeah, yeah. and I like the generalization of the term because it leaves everything open yeah. do you know what I mean it's not like oh I'm a weightlifter I'm a this I'm a that like movement encompasses everything anything to do with movement yeah. you know um, so that's a great thing but then of course it's picked up yeah. by and turned into a, a, a fad term you know what I mean it's like yeah but that's just the way it is I mean I was, I was chatting with some fellow coaches about it it's kind of joking away like why are all mover, movers still and they're like why do they all just want to practice handstands and front yeah, movers yeah. and stuff like, <laughs> why don't they actually move <laughs> yeah it's so true <laughs> it's like it's everyone's obsessed like oh I gotta get the handstand down so, like, yeah I mean it has its uses and I could argue about that all day but like why yeah, <laughs> yeah well why yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because I mean like I've I love it when someone comes to me as a coach and says like I want to be able to do this like I had one guy come to me he was a 60 year old lad who was a painter and all he wanted to do was get down on the floor with his kid he's you know had a young kid and was like I want to get down on the floor and play with the kid that's all so all he wanted was a deep squat and I was like yep yeah, no problem we're working on that and it's like that's again what we're talking about it's that insurance like mobility and strength they're both two sides of that coin and you do kind of need to realise like well why am I doing it and what is the benefit of it going to be to me exactly yeah I had a similar thing a guy in um, Vodafone I was working over in Vodafone and uh, he's similar about 55 57 something like that and he just wanted to do a cartwheel <laughs> but, and like that Brilliant. makes me so happy do you know yeah, what I mean yeah. I was like he came he was kind of shy come down he was like oh I heard uh I heard you're the guy that can do like do all, all the, the weird like, shit and uh, I was like yeah. oh yeah and he just wanted to learn how to do a cartwheel because it was his granddaughter's birthday and he was trying to do cartwheels ah, with him so, fantastic. do you know what I mean yeah, so we spent so like a like, like, yeah. couple of weeks working on cartwheels like and he picked it up and oh. I was like that's I love that that's beautiful yeah. like and that's as good a reason to train as as valid as someone who wants to do a 200 kilo deadlift it's better even in my that's, opinion that's that I point mean, like, like, it doesn't have to be like oh I have to get this amazing yeah. like strength goal or whatever it's like you do you you do what you want to do that makes you yeah. happy if you want to be that granddad doing a cartwheel with his granddaughter yeah. fucking hey man yeah. go do it like. exactly and like this is what annoys me about about people as well like in a way it's like we're so just caught up in everything that like we don't realise like you fucking wake up in the morning you got two legs, you got two arms, and you're walking around. You're gifted, like, do you know what I mean? Like, uh, the way I see it, it's your goddamn duty to do some moving. Because otherwise, it's a shame. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you're not using what you've got, it's a shame. Like, there's so much joy to be experienced from from moving your body and appreciating it. And I think that changes the whole relationship then with, like... People don't have, they have a, like a strange relationship with their physicality. It's like we're nearly separated from our physicality and that like a lot of people have nearly a hatred for their body. It's like this thing they're going to fucking impose on their body. Go do six hit classes a week. You know what I mean? Like get in. What are you doing? Like body, let's go. Like I'm going to keep punishing you until you do what I want you to do instead of treating it with love and respect and a bit of appreciation for what you actually have, you know, and what you can do. And that changes the whole, that's a shift in perspective that but changes everything. You see, you know? I, I think for a lot of people, and I think that's why, like I've chatted to people about this, I think that's why movement is such a, an unusual and amazing practice is that you're kind of forced to learn about yourself. And I don't mean like, oh, you know, in your spiritual journey. I mean, like you're literally, well, that for, too. For, <laughs> and then, yeah, for some people it is. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, what I mean for most people is that you have to learn how your body works. Mm-hmm. And, I've tried saying this to people that like I can teach you a stretch and I, that's how the, the the first time that we actually probably sat down and, and you know had the chats and yeah. we, I, you came and I showed you some stretch and stuff and you followed me up on a ball yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sat yeah and crushed you and did all sorts of fun stuff best night of my life <laughs> <laughs> just won't tell the missus that <laughs> but oh, I was like I want that <laughs> yeah I, I, like I was saying to you that I can show and even over footage, like over video, I could show someone a stretch and go, there's a stretch, do it. But little tiny tweaks of like, oh, just turn my foot this way or point this that way or pull this that way, it completely changes what it is. And you need to learn how your body works and what your body needs. That is the important thing. Like I was chatting to a woman at work and 
a slightly larger lady, but she was saying that like I was always doing this hit class and it was fantastic and I love it, but the problem is afterwards every time my knees hurt. <laughs> and I was going, Well what are they making you do? And she's like, Oh, it tends to be after the burpees. Yeah. And I was kinda like you know, you don't want to say it, especially to a woman. I mean it's quite an insensitive thing to go, Well maybe you should lose some weight. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you should change and do another practice that isn't so hard on you. And that's what that's what I said. I mean, well, maybe that's not the best thing to do. Maybe you should try a different class, or whatever. He's like, oh no, but you know, that, like it feels good, and you get that endorphin rush, and it feels great. And it's like, well, yeah, but like, it's not necessarily good for you. Yeah. Like you could be out doing boxing, swinging at a bag, and getting punched in the head, but is is yeah. that good for you? <laughs> like, if that's something that you really want to do, by all means, go do it. But yeah is it getting the benefit that you want and if it's causing you pain and potentially long term pain then maybe you need to step back and go right maybe you need to fix this so I can get better at this thing yeah. and I think that for me was a big reason why I got into coaching people with martial arts and stuff because that's the big big fallacy in the martial arts world of like all you need to get better at martial arts is just do more martial yeah, arts yeah. and to get fitter at it is just <laughs> do more of it <laughs> yeah you laugh and sit away it's, like, yeah. it's the, the classic one and I've had so many people in Jiu Jitsu say that to me and even like really top level guys will say it and then I, I saw like an interview with I think it was like three of the red belts who were like the highest belt you can get in Jiu Jitsu and they're all just like yeah of course and one of them was like yeah I mean if you take fighter X and fighter Y they're both black belts both in training 10 years whatever and one guy does a lot of strength and conditioning is in super good shape and the other guy does nothing straight away that guy has a massive advantage over the other guy of course yeah and we're not saying you need to go out and be super pro athletes if you like going out for a walk or fucking climbing a tree or whatever it is I mean that's the thing as well like people are I think that's a big thing that people are so terrified of being silly yeah absolutely I don't know who was talking about it recently that like I think basically saying that for men our kind of number one fear tends to be being made fun of and being you know out to be silly or whatnot yeah and it shouldn't be like yeah especially when you're fitness like, you shouldn't be afraid of it I mean, you, you were talking about it earlier it was fantastic the idea of like an adult playground yeah like, Christ I'd love that like, <laughs> honestly like yeah like a safe zone you know yeah, where like you can go and stupid. play <laughs> yeah yeah and I think people would love it and like I noticed that with the classes that I was doing on the beach is that like right if we, if, we, if, if I bring you to a normal like Hold class on. I hate to interrupt you we're just going to take a wee 10 minute pause and we'll be back in a little bit Right, and we're back. Sorry about that, folks. Oh, uh, right. My girlfriend coming back, so let's have a lady in. I noticed you sneakily filled my uh, whiskey glass up while oh, I was in the I? toilet. You <laughs> devil, you. <laughs> Don't take advantage of it. Such a devil. Yeah, that's just what we do in this house. Play, <laughs> play people drink and get good, good conversation. <laughs> Darkest secrets. Yes. Yeah, but I mean, that, that's coming back to it. Like, you know, you got to also make time to have fun. Have interesting chats with people, too. Like, that's the whole goal. You know what I mean? And there's so much pleasure to be had in this life. Like, and it's not just about seeking pleasure, but there's so much like things to be enjoyed, people to have deep conversations with. And, you know, you can get caught in just enjoying the kind of simple pleasures. You know, sitting in front of the TV or yeah. watching on Netflix or whatever. It's a very yeah. easy way to because those things like they're kind of weird little hacks where they they take advantage of certain primal things that we have you know these yeah. primal urges like just eat as much carbohydrate as you can and like or look at the bright lights get, and just yeah. like these are real like chimp things you know what <laughs> I mean that was just like yeah shiny. <laughs> yeah and like I, I think there's this the human kind of persona is split in two you know you've got that ancient kind of chimp side of you and you've got your logical kind of human yeah. brain and the two of them have to work synergistically like you can't you can't be all chimp, but at the same time, you can't be all all logic, you know. I think a lot of people work. like really don't like to accept that either. A lot of people like to feel like, oh, I'm too you know, sound of mind and rational, all that. And it's kind yeah. of like you see a lot of intellectual, smart folk kind of making fun of uh, you know, gym heads and juice heads yeah, and yeah. carry on. It's like, oh, yeah, I mean, some of them are ridiculous, but they're just trying to look after their body. Like, and it's not yeah. all those people are stupid either. Yeah. <laughs> And, like, take that same person who's judging, like, an uh, inverted commas meathead for, you know, celebrating a deadlift or something, and cut him off in five o'clock traffic and see how goddamn logical he is. He'll be screaming at you and fucking, you know, cursing mm-hmm. and blinding at you. So, like, we all have a darkness in us, like, and I think this is part of accepting 
here we are like humans like and that's why martial arts and that's the appeal of those things that we you have to it's like a dog like you have to control that side of yourself because if you don't it's just gonna run fucking right you know what i mean and um, it's gonna just but i think like any of these things you have to accept that you have that in you too absolutely like yeah i had a friend yeah. of mine who was chatting to about a very similar topic and i was just saying like he likes to be the very kind of intellectual type and be like oh you know i don't have any issues with mm. you know aggression or whatever but he does but doesn't like to admit it and i'm always like yeah maybe doing something like martial arts would be good for you you get that out it's like oh no Problem yeah, for me. Yeah, and then yeah. other people are like, no, man, it's a bit of a problem for you. <laughs> yeah, no, it's. Uh, yeah. I think a lot of people don't like to accept that you still have that chimp brain yeah. sitting in there going. And like, it's just expressed in a different way. Like, yeah. those people are a lot of times very passive aggressive mm-hmm. and they're using like an intellectual form of aggression, but it's still aggression. Mm-hmm. You know, you're just like using your clever brain to hack the rules of this environment that we live in and the social structure so that you can won't have any comeback. But you're still being an aggressive person just because you're not being physically aggressive. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's any less aggressive. Like, I mean, the you know? outpour hate you see on Twitter is a pretty good example. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, because there's yeah, no consequences. Comments. You know, yeah. and that's the same thing where people use like social situations and they use like tones of voice and certain ways of speaking so they can be aggressive but without having any kind of comeback for it. That you know? Overtly being aggressive. Yeah, personally, I'm a fan of straight talking. Yeah. You know? <laughs> we got talk. Like I, I love the type of people like like yourself and the other people like that that. I Don't just be too, Jody. huh? Don't be too, Jody. No, I love people who talk honestly and speak as it is. Like I'm sure if I if I say something that you disagree with, you're gonna tell me that you disagree with it. Bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> I disagree completely. But you're not gonna just agree with me for the sake of it. You know what I mean, I think that's important. That's a huge thing. Like agreeableness is not necessarily a great thing. I, I think know. the thing that's been really lost. Over the, like especially over the past few years I think I've seen is that you can also disagree with someone and still be friends with exactly them. yeah just because you disagree and they have mm. very different opinions doesn't mean that they're wrong yeah it doesn't mean that you're right either absolutely or this like grouping of beliefs and ideas is that like oh for instance if like oh, I agree with something that I don't know pick some controversial figure like Ben Shapiro or like Milo Yiannopoulos Donald Trump <laughs> yeah like your, your podcast is going to go up in flames now <laughs> but if <laughs> I if I for instance down. agree with one thing that that person says yeah. then it's assumed that you agree with everything that that person believes and like yeah. how fucking stupid is that do you know what I mean like yeah. you can oh, it's, it's it's so silly it's like it's like me saying like oh I like Volkswagen cars so yeah. I, that, by that logic I like Hitler <laughs> yeah exactly it's like, not yeah you came up with them but like no yeah. I, don't, I don't like the man at all he's a fucking <laughs> it's an overly simplistic view of a world that's getting more and more complicated you know yeah. I think that is our monkey brain likes to have that you know, very we're binary, tribal isn't it it's thing, like yeah, yeah I'm team Trump you're team Hillary like in <laughs> red team versus blue team whatever yeah like oh I fucking know too you're bleeding Vodafone like it's it's a weird thing and like tribalism isn't a, a bad thing it's just misplaced because I think the we don't have it it's not yeah. it's, it's something that we de- we desire and that we need I think but it's not why provided people crave these sports and these activities yeah. as well, well that's like, CrossFit like, like the whole yeah, CrossFit yeah. is like based on creating a little tribe you know what I mean and it works 100%. beautifully like um, and it's pro- I think that's probably the best thing about CrossFit is that it gives people a community you know yeah. um, and that's what I always loved about it that's so, so how come you gym. kind of fell out of the CrossFit world or well, teaching CrossFit I should say um, ah, for various different reasons um, business partnerships are not always the easiest things to navigate yeah, yeah, and the problem true. with partnerships and with being in business with people is that people have different goals and if so you might want one thing and I might want the other and we're both equally as passionate about our thing which means we're not as passionate about the other person's thing do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Common things, goals and common end goals. And yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, partnerships are entered into very easily in Ireland. It's like handshake and all of a sudden we're in business. <laughs> and, you know, in other countries it's a lot more difficult and there's there's things you have to go through. And I think that's a good loose. thing, yeah. honestly, because it, the partnership is a dangerous thing if it goes bad, you know. Um, that on one side, um, just business being kind of, like to a certain extent unviable like we we in the gym had to move very quickly so we had a problem with neighbors we were in a the unit that we were in was going very well mm. it was a smaller unit less overheads and kind of in the space of 25 days we had to move 
because there was issues with neighbours. We had seismic tests and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the landlord got the willies and told us we had to be out. So a unit yeah, across like the way came up. Deadlifts are getting too heavy. Yeah, it was like, yeah like we literally had people in doing seismic tests and like cutting channels in the ground. And you shouldn't have gone for that 200 kilo then. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, that was the yeah, cherry on the cake. One too heavy. Like. <laughs> but yeah, it came to the point where we just had to move. And the unit that we moved into was like three times as big, three times as expensive. Yeah. Um, That's a problem in Dublin. And it was a big hit, you know. And like, you see the problem with, like, the minute you crack at a certain point, you're all of a sudden like paying VAT and paying all these different things. So that came around very quickly and it just put pressure on it. And then, you know, that puts pressure on relationships as well. And I just wasn't prepared to be involved in that anymore because it, it wasn't, it wasn't what I wanted to be involved in you know what I mean like I was very passionate about CrossFit still but from a personal point of view like training CrossFit it was HRV actually that like kind of opened my brain to the fact that mm -hmm. maybe yeah. this is not something that I should be doing so I started messing around with the Elite HRV app at the time which was a free app because yeah. the other one was BioForce which was like stupid money Yeah. so Elite HRV brought out, brought out their app and I was playing with that and I was crossfitting like six or seven days a week. And like I was looking at the HRV and it was like red, 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 red. Um, but if you don't know, the HRV app gives you a red, orange or green light to kind of yeah, very tell simple, you whether like... you can train or not. Basically how stressed you are. Um, and at the time I was in the army, I was running the gym at the same time and training CrossFit like six days a week. And I think that's a big thing is like volume and training is all great, but your body doesn't know the difference between physical stress and mental work stress, life stress, all of that stuff. That's all, you know, adds up into like, stress. Actually, if, if anyone's, yeah. sorry, just speaking of stress, I, I, it was really funny. I was at a, an MMA fight with some friends recently just watching it. And, um, you know, one of the guys who was watching, he was going up to fight and, you were watching him standing there, watching, like, yeah. and his shoulders slowly getting more and more up, and his hackles going up, and the shoulders rounding out. <laughs> and I the side, and he's going, like, Jesus, like, his shoulders getting real tense, so maybe we should go back and relax. And I was like, put your hand in your traps. And he's like, what? Like, put your hand in your traps. And he put his hand in the trap, solid as a rock. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the hell's going on? And he's like, yep. Yeah. Like, your brain doesn't know the difference between someone else you know, being yeah. in a fight, well, and you there watching yeah. it. Like, your, you know, your body's physically getting ready for it, and that yeah. stress. And, like, yeah, I mean, the, the HRV stuff, I got it. In, kind of introduced to it through uh, through the Bioforce through um, Joe Jameson because I was looking at you know, um, Mighty Mouse <laughs> yeah 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 uh, whoever trains this guy clearly knows what he's yeah, up to <laughs> that's what I first heard about it too actually yeah, yeah. I've shout out to Joe Jameson yeah really, absolutely really uh, yeah. knowledgeable guy in the, in the field like I just wasn't prepared to spend the money on the yeah on I was the just, I was just saying, <laughs> <laughs> the exact same but actually like it was interesting for me because I realised that Two to three CrossFit workouts a week was it for me. Like after that, I couldn't recover. Yeah. You know, and like before, I was just working stupid hours and training like a lunatic and wondering why it was hard for me to shift body fat. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because my stress levels were just through the roof. Like so, that transferred. And when I look at people now, I'm like, okay, you've got like a mother. She's working like in a high stress job she's got three kids and on top of that she's doing like seven hit classes a week and you know maybe that's maybe the last thing you actually need is another hit class you know maybe you need to like not, do some light mobility work or yeah yeah you need a good sleep love work. that's what yeah. you need you know what i mean like eat, eat some healthy food and go to bed at nine o'clock every night yeah. because that'll do you actually better than flailing yourself and punishing your body and again it's that negative attitude of like I'm going to force my body into submission. Like that's very different to using willpower to shape where your body is going. Like you know I, mean? I was very different joking concepts. about this recently that like you can train all you want and you can train an absolute animal like fucking 10, 18 hours a day if you want. But all of your growth happens when you're asleep. So okay. like, yeah. I, I mean, interesting thing I found out recently, I'm chatting to a professional bodybuilder. He was telling me, on average, when he's you know training really hard, it was say fourteen to eighteen hours a day he sleeps. Nice, because that's what he needs. So the rest of the time, almost the entire rest of the time, he's just eating or working out because his body is that strained. I mean, yeah. six or seven hours working out a day, intense. Well, yeah, 
and he's at the extreme end of the scale, yeah, yeah. so he has no choice. You know what I mean? He has to sleep. Yeah, that's the only option. But yeah, that gives yeah. you an idea. Like even to get that, you know, massive growth and that those improvements, you have to rest. Yeah, you have to yeah. make sure that you're doing that. Yeah. If you get off the sofa and try to do, you know, the old school Arnie workout, it's good luck to you. <laughs> So a lot of people do that, you know. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, true. No, it's true. Yeah. Of, I do know, a lot of people enjoy it. Like, yeah, yeah, unfortunately, it's very true. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's an unfortunate part of the the fitness world. People see yeah. like, oh, you know, all these shredded guys. I should do his workout, mm-hmm. and that's a like, that's I, a huge problem. I, I'm going to say this really honestly. Bit of real talk right now. Shout out to R. Kelly. <laughs> but I see so many people who go and train with large, you know, like they say, let's say bodybuilders or you know, very muscular. Um, trainers who don't necessarily have a very extensive background other than they've trained themselves you take in someone new off the street and go you're doing my workout now and you'll get big like me yeah the problem is you won't it will ruin your body mm-hmm. because that guy spent whatever four or five years he's taken god knows what mexican supplements and you know he's worked his way up to that whereas if you get off the sofa and start doing stuff it takes time you got to build your way up to it exactly you know it's not just like what strap on all the weights and yeah, yeah. get going like yeah and like in a literal actual like way like people even jumping into strength training like too soon and like like i did the anatomy and motion course with gary ward show out the gary who's an absolute mm-hmm. goddamn genius and he's basically mapped out like the human body in 3d how it moves in the gait cycle and he has one big thing that i am mental for anyone who's like followed any of the stuff that I talk about two things I'm mad for is feet and breathing yes. <laughs> like Gary's yeah. work on feet the, the, yeah. the roles they play in everything yeah like example if you if you take somebody who has a flatter left foot just for instance like that the effect that the flat foot has on the body up the chain is insane you know flat left foot leads to hips shifted right hips rotated right then the torso has to counter rotate left, lean to the left. The head has to counter rotate to the right. So you've got this crazy zigzag pattern going on up the body just from the foot being slightly flat at the bottom. Now you take that same person and you stick a barbell on the back with their feet parallel Everything and you have them squatting. And all of a sudden you see, because when you load somebody up, you can all of a sudden see where the problems are because they're like accentuate you know what I mean so you see this person where like their hips are shifting right you're like what's going on here you know but that's happening in daily life in skate you just can't see it so what effectively what you're doing with that person then is bringing them deeper and deeper and deeper into that bad pattern you know you're you're nearly ingraining a bad you're you're gonna lead eventually that's gonna lead to an injury you know so if you don't if if you don't affect some change in that left foot like anything else you do is is just reinforcing that bad pattern so like it, it, that's getting deep but that's nearly where i'm looking at now it's like wow well, it's, like it's it's that boring work that people don't like to do yeah exactly it's doing the, the little tiny things that are yeah. so difficult to do it's not instagrammable <laughs> with my friend um now i forget his company name and i apologize for it the fellow gmb coach rob uh, wester is his name Really, I think it's your functional body, maybe. Don't sorry, mess, sorry, sorry, mate. You forgot <laughs> it. I, I, for, I forgot your, <laughs> forgot your, uh, your company name. But it's um, so much shit right now. But he put up a brilliant post today of his son. He was only eight years old, just doing uh, movements with his feet and just his toes. Nice. And you know, a lot of people will look at it and go, "Like, what? It's a kid wiggling his toes." Right. I, I'll pose this to anyone listening. Right. Put your foot flat on the floor, whether you're wearing shoes or not, right? Put your foot flat on the floor and try lift just your big toe without lifting any other toes. Mm. Now try lift your baby toe. Mm-hmm. Try that. If any of you can do it, <laughs> send me an email. <laughs> because it, like, as an adult, you wear shitty shoes most of your life, like most of us do, and it is fucking ruins your feet. Yeah. And I know, like, I, a, a coach talked about this recently, and I actually plan on writing about this soon, but he was saying, like, oh, the idea of a barefoot shoes is laughable it's a silly idea and I agree it is because you're never going to have barefoot shoes mm. but the problem is normal shoes are far worse yeah <laughs> yeah I don't think it's laughable look I think no like I mean a shoe will never replicate it and what I mean by that is let's say yeah. like I do parkour and if I'm doing a jump even with like the, the shoes I have in the corner there the Tegivos it's like a two mil sole mm-hmm. 
It's about as thin as you can physically get mm-hmm. when you have a shoe. But there's things I can do on that I can't do barefoot. So I will agree that yeah, the shoe you know you can do things that you can't do otherwise barefoot. But it's way better to have that physical contact and grip with the floor. Yeah, and I have shoes that aren't like like your your standard. Uh, they call it you know your standard dress shoe that has like a you know a pointed toe yeah it's gonna just wreck your 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 absolutely your toes and your feet. Yeah, yeah agreed completely and like you're never going to achieve because look we live in an unnatural environment so like if you, you want to walk around your bare feet on concrete like it's, it's like people are making either, these like. arguments but like walking around your bare feet on concrete is not very natural either mm. you know what i mean so yeah like barefoot shoes are never i love people always like go for that no 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 it's fucking better than wearing a heel yeah. shoe with that squat in your toes. It's a lot better than the alternative. So much better. And I'll tell you one thing, after doing that and I'm the emotion course, like it's a seven day immersion course. You're doing like eight to eight every day, fully immersed in, and working with the wedges. So you use wedges like to I have a the corner. Yeah, so yeah. you know the wedges like after doing that course, I had to try out all my shoes. Yeah. But my feet changed shape. They got yeah. wider and they got longer. Oh mine it might have after one week, the same, yeah. You know, and that was such an eye opener for me. Like it was, because I was spent a lot of time barefoot. Like trained in martial arts, and I was spent a fair bit of time barefoot. You know, and I would have thought that my feet were probably, you know, in better, better shape than ever. Than ever than and maybe they were a bit, but it was such a mind opening thing to have to like, well, my feet, shoes actually don't fit me anymore. Like, <laughs> you know, like it, it just baffles me that people just ignore it as well. Because I mean, if you had like this table in front of us, if those legs were wonky at the bottom. You fix it. Yeah. They're like, right, enough of that. I gotta fix it. I gotta yeah. fix these feet. It's actually so fucked up when yeah, you yeah, think about people it. People like, don't. <laughs> they're just like, ah, oh, it's stupid. Yeah. And look, I can't wear a shoe with a heel now or, or yeah. a squash. I get, toe. Like, do you get calf pain when you do it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. My feet are being bits. Like, yeah. if, <laughs> I wear, exactly like if I wear dress shoes, like you're talking about, my uh, arches and all immediately painful. Like, my heels get weird pains I've never had before. It's yeah, I, I used to wear boots a lot when I was younger. You know? Like, you know, like hiking boots and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And now I can't. I yeah. can't wear them for that long. I'm the same. I'm the same. Like these Vivo barefoots I have here are Cracking shoes. literally all I've been wearing for the last. I mean, they were the, the first pair of barefoot shoes I got was uh, I forget the, the Vivos, but it's discontinued now. But I mean, it changed my feet completely. Yeah, because I've always had very wide feet, mm-hmm. except at the end of them. You can see that. Pretty, pretty... My mate used to say I got like big axe feet. But uh, yeah, I mean, like I even <laughs> with the girlfriend when for watching something, like watching a film, I have I have like the you know the, the toes pasters for painting your toes. Oh yeah, and I'll just shove them in and sit there and watch it just to like they're great. Let feet open out. Like, yeah, I do a similar thing. I just like take my foot and enter lock my fingers like as if you were doing like. And hold them, like, yeah, yeah, like, like the, the finger the, between each toe, you know what I mean? It just hands, like, spreads the feet out completely, and it feels really nice. Like, and I always do silly stuff as well. Like, people always laugh when they see me, like, you know, picking a joke, and they say, Be more L, and you kind of pick stuff up and <laughs> carry it around the house with your foot, <laughs> yes. you pens or whatever. Like, that's stuff's important. I do a lot barefoot walking, running on the beach, like, and that's it's so nice, like, on, on so many levels. Like, I'm not into I don't know how, how solid the evidence is on everything <laughs> yeah I but know. i know I mean, that so when i do it. that like when i go but if i'm in a ship mill and i go barefoot walk on the beach i feel instantly better for various reasons you know but uh maybe it's just spending time in nature you know Oops, sorry, folks. but getting my feet on the ground in a literal sense is, is a big thing like it's big for me like so speaking Maybe. of beach, you've been uh, running some classes out in yeah, Island. Yeah, yeah, we're running some uh, some movement class as well. I call it. I just call it the movement, oh. and not <laughs> as in see, it's the more movements. it's more in a, in a philosophical sense than anything. It's a it's actually a Marxist group. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see it as a as a like a movement against that mainstream. Yeah, I like it. You know, fitness thing fitness of this world, like, like it has to be. A sweat vest and it has to like be structured and so you know like it oh, is burpees and barbells it's about play and exploring and actually fucking interacting with other people like we do a lot of drills where you've got to actually like mimic people look into their eyes and like shout out to andy andy myers over in am fitness like and, and vincent and the boys over there because they do a lot of that stuff 
within the gym environment. Do you know what I mean? Hope to, hope to have those guys on soon. So yeah. if you're listening, guys, you absolute know? legends, <laughs> legends. Um, I mean, I owe a lot to Andy. Like he's he's been yeah. a, a huge inspiration to me, and he's you know honestly, I wouldn't be doing this podcast, and I didn't even know if I'd be teaching because like he's. Well, one, he's a lovely guy, but he's also given me a lot of motivation and pushed me towards doing stuff and also allowed me to to meet a lot of coaches who I've kind of idolized for a while. Yeah. And actually meet them and go like, wow, this guy's a person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that in a flippant way, but like that whole thing of like never meet your idols, I think it can be good, especially if it's someone in your same field, because mm-hmm. then you go like, Oh yeah, like they're really good at what they do, but yeah. they're also human. Like exactly. they don't know this other thing that I yeah. might know about, yeah. or they don't know whatever. Yeah, and I like I love Andy. He's such a he's such a like he knows he has so much knowledge. Yeah, he's got such a good way with people, and you always take time to listen to anyone. I love the way he runs that gym, and like he's so humble as well. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. Andy, like you hear Andy a compliment, and he's like. It's not really, you know what I mean? He starts <laughs> pushing. Like that. But that, I love that about him, you know what I mean? He's just he's such a good dude. Like, yeah, he really um, is. And like you say, I've been introduced through Andy, like, I've been introduced to so many different people, like yourself. Like, I wouldn't have met you yeah, if I, good. like, the first time I met you was in AM Fitness, yeah. yeah. So, you know, so many other people actually that I've met, like the girl I trained Ariel with. I met her over in Andy's Force of All, Ray, who's also a legend. That's actually the, the first MMA club I started training in is where she was. That was originally an SPG, yeah, yeah. Back and the um, yeah, so like Andy for me is like, that place is like a little beacon of light for me. I, I, I love what he's doing there. Um, and like he stuck out the hard times, I think, you know, where the movement stuff maybe wasn't like in, in years gone by. Yeah, I mean like in fairness now, Andy, before Edo was even known of and movement and movement culture and all this stuff was a thing. I mean, Andy was still had that gym going. I mean, if exactly if anyone looks at Emmett Lewis's old videos, like any of the instructional where he's, where he's standing in front of a white wall, that was the back of Andy's old, like the old layout to his gym yeah, before he yeah. expanded it and what it is now. Yeah. Like, a lot of people don't realize, like, you know, those boys have been there for a long time. The way before doing, this like, movement shit was sexy, you know. Yeah. And uh, like I was only saying this to Andy the other day, I was like, you're in such a good position, you know what I mean? You like, you've put in so much groundwork on this stuff, and now it's like. This is the shit. Like it's blowing up now. Do you know what I mean? It's a bad time. Like, yeah, I deserve I'm it. Super happy for him. Like you know what I mean? Like such a great crew over there. But anyway, enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> enough fires licking. Back, back to you. <laughs> Andy, you prick. Don't get a big head. <laughs> I love you. Oh, you, Vincent, you French. <laughs> <laughs> Vincent, don't get me started Suck on Vincent. Man. Silky smooth little buttery French oh, man. Moves far too well. <laughs> <laughs> and Anthony, I met there too as well. Who actually. I met on the AIM course yeah. as well, and Anthony is another guy who's got yeah, I mean, he's helped me super wealth of well. knowledge. Like, yeah. dude, his brain works in such a like. I just wish, like, he has adopted that AIM stuff. Like, he's just gone so deep into it. Like, it's part of his. It's part of him now. Do you know what I mean? And it's not because well, it is because he has a, he has an amazing brain, but it's because he's put the work in. Like, I know that mad fucker that's, sitting down yeah, watching that, like three, right four like, hours yeah. of stuff a night. You know, he's just absorbing it, like. And sometimes I wish I wasn't such a generalist in terms of being a greedy bastard and wanting to do everything. <laughs> sometimes I wish I had like that laser focus to just zone in on one thing. You know. Yeah, I mean but, that's that for me has been a big one on my own training, trying to like just focus on one thing. Yeah, and it's actually uh, the fellow I was showing you earlier, Eric Bugenhagen. Shout out to the Boos, <laughs> <laughs> the Boogs. If I say it wrong, sorry, Eric. <laughs> But he had a great video recently about like just one exercise, I think it's called. And it's that idea of like, especially if you're doing really hard movement, like your deadlift, you're much better off just going in and doing one thing and doing it well. Yeah. And like Andy's doing with the AM stuff, he's going in, he's doing that one thing. And now he's doing other stuff, but he's doing that one thing well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Serious man for it, like. Yeah, unbelievable. So, um,. <laughs> Yeah, I know you have to get up at stupid o'clock in the morning. So yeah. when you let people know, four fifty-five. Yeah, I want everyone to know that. Like a boss. Yeah. <laughs> He's up here drinking whiskey with me to all hours. Should give him a good like chat. A soldier. So, do you have any uh, parting advice for people? Um, there's no right or wrong way. Just a point from which to start. It's a nice one. Uh, when you let people know how to find you and where you're at. Um, you can find out about events and coming courses so I'm going to have a lot of outdoor training stuff on in the new year when the weather gets a bit better um, jodykennedy.ie 
at Jody Kennedy underscore IE on Instagram. Um, Facebook, I'm not like majorly using so much, but you can find me there as well, Jody Kennedy. But Instagram and text me, get on to me. Yeah. If you've got questions, DM me. I'm always down for a combo. Slide those DMs, <laughs> folks. Um, yeah, and I'll leave links and all that in his in the description for the YouTube video and everywhere else. Uh, if anyone just wants to get in contact with me, streamingfitnessatgmail.com, I'll put you in contact with them. Um, actually, a pleasure, Jody, coming out. An honor. A great chat. An honor. And, uh, yeah, look forward to getting more of it and hopefully get out to you guys out in Bull Island some mornings. Yes, bro. It'll be great. Hop on the bike. Absolute <laughs> pleasure. Uh, that was a Mind Your Movements podcast. Have a great evening, morning, or good night, folks.